How's it going guys? Welcome back to Ranwen Parked. Uh, if you all watched the last video that I posted, uh, you saw that right towards the end I started messing with the transfer case in the FJ40 and uh, what I found that was that the four-wheel drive selectors both for high-low and for 4.2 were uh, frozen up inside the case. Now the second problem was that I re reached under the, the trans during that episode. This thing doesn't have a torque converter in it so I could just grab right onto the input shaft and uh, it won't turn, even in neutral. And uh, I'm no automatic transmission guy, but I would imagine that it would turn in neutral. So uh, what I did is I took the 40 out and uh, I pulled the motor trans and transfer case right here. Now, I didn't videotape that just because, uh, I don't know, I didn't really think it was worthwhile. But uh, it's out now. So what I want to do before I order a transfer case and a new flex plate and everything to put this thing together with the LS is... Uh, I want to take the transfer case off because I don't know at this point if the transfer case is seized up, which, you know, is definitely a likelihood because the linkages were, were seized up, or if my TH350 is bad. Uh, and if that's the case, I want to know that now so I can get a new one in it before it goes back in because it would be easy right now. Um, other than taking the transfer case off, if everything works out the way we want it to, uh, we're also going to degrease this thing. So we're going to clean it up, paint it, maybe paint the trans if uh, it isn't seized up. And then uh, we're gonna do something about the transfer case. Now I have this transfer case and I also went ahead and I took the transfer case out of the parts truck, which is in the back of the garage, which came out of the sheep pasture. Um, so between those two, we're gonna put together a good transfer case. We're gonna put this whole thing back together. We're gonna get it painted. Uh, and then it's gonna go right back into Jordy the 40 and that'll be it for the drive line. We'll be ready to move on to bigger and better things and get ready to run this thing. So stick with me because we got a lot of work to do today. All right, guys, so step one is complete. Um, there's really no good way for me to film it, but I just reached under the front of the bell housing on the input shaft, and this thing now rotates over perfectly fine. Uh, so it looks like our TH350 is not the culprit. This thing, however, barely spins. Uh, you probably saw I grabbed that shaft. I can get it to spin, but it takes a lot of force to do it. And again, I'm not surprised. It looks terrible back there. So we do have a problem, though. Um, when I took the other transfer case out of the other truck, the one out back, uh, this shaft, this output shaft on the trans went all the way through the back of this. So this thing's got like a spud shaft on it here, which is kind of a cool design. I don't have a problem with it, but if you look up here, this one obviously uh, not designed that way. So these are all adapters from, I think, Advanced Adapter. That's who makes this. So I think the next thing we're going to do probably is get this thing in the shop. Uh, then we'll degrease the engine just to get it going so I can paint it later. And then uh, while that's drying, we're going to rip this one apart. We're going to rip the other one apart. And then uh, we're going to see if we can put one good transfer case together, which is going to be pretty intensive because i got to take the covers off and the gears in there sit on that shaft. So I have to figure out how to get that spud shaft out of there, which I have no idea how to do. So uh, that's going to be interesting. So I guess let's get to taping this thing up and degreasing it.
Guys, I just want to take a quick minute to shout out Super Clean. Uh, Super Clean is in no way, shape, or form a sponsor of this video. However, about a year ago when I first started, I probably had like 200 subscribers and Super Clean reached out randomly uh, and asked if I wanted to get on board with their brand. So they made no requirements. They didn't require me to say anything about it, review it, none of that. They just sent me a box of stuff, uh, no strings attached, and they just wanted me to use it. Um, so apparently they were very, very confident in that stuff. I've been using it for the past year. They gave me like speedy dry, carpet cleaner, upholstery cleaner, uh, some polish, I think, and lots of different degreasers. Um, and today, it just so happens I'm degreasing this engine. I used all super clean products, and I have to say that it works unbelievably. Last week, I degreased the other transfer case that I pulled out of the parts truck. It was caked and stuff, and what I did was I went kind of head to head. I used uh, the stuff that you get at any auto parts store. Everyone knows what that is. Uh, and it did okay, but then I put the super clean on and it like literally just cooked the grease right off of it. I mean, it was literally dripping off of it while I was spraying it. So the stuff works great. Um, I just can't say enough good about it. I mean, honestly, take a look at this before and after from today of the valve cover on this thing and you be the judge yourself. So support super clean because they support us. Uh, obviously they're really into the DIY thing. That's why they probably got on board with my channel so early. So go out, get yourself some super clean because it works absolutely fantastic. Back to cleaning this engine. All right, guys, so next step. Motor and trans turned out awesome. They look great. Paint came out awesome. Transmission doesn't look like it's a uh, used stock unit, which is kind of cool. It'll look good under there. Um, that's all set. Next thing we need to do is these transfer cases. So I kind of got into this before, but on the left here is the transfer case that came out of the truck. Uh, the bearings on that one are pretty much shot. It barely moves, um, and it's grindy as hell. This one uh, came out of the 71 or 72 parts truck I have that came out of the sheep pasture originally, and the bearings on this one are much better. Uh, it moves really smooth. Also on this one, the four-wheel drive actuator for high-low and for 2.4 right here, uh, neither one of them move at all or want to move. And the reason why I took it apart, this shaft, which is for the high-low, uh, it's completely rotted out, so the thing there rusted. So the thing on that slides on it won't move at all. This one works perfect. I doubt I can move it with my hand, but it works perfect. Now the problems. This is an older unit, and it has a vacuum actuated 2-4 uh, shifter on it. This is a newer unit, and it has the manual 2-4 shifter on it. So I gotta switch those, and hope that this one is still good, and it's just inside the transfer case where the problem is. So that's gonna be the first thing. If we get past that, then the second thing is this one's all adapted with this advanced adapter spud shaft and things and like a separate bearing and stuff that this one does not have. So we need to start looking at how to make that adaption work. But the bottom line is if I can get that in there and if I can get the manual shift on that one, then we have an easy solution. We'll go forward with that one. So let's start tearing these things down and uh, we'll see what we got. Alright guys, so this is pretty interesting. So this is the vacuum operated uh, two low or two four actuator uh, and it is off the unit that seems to be in much better condition. And this is the manual two four actuator and it seems it's off the unit that seems to be in much worse condition, which was originally in the truck that I'm building. Uh, and I want the manual one for obvious reasons. It's a lot easier to use, it's a lot easier to fabricate with. But what's interesting here is that the one that's off the unit that's in better condition is completely mangled. Uh, I don't know if you saw in the video, but I actually had to break out a pry bar to get it off of there, and the thing is literally melted on the shaft. But if you look at the shaft in there, uh, I don't know if you can really focus on that, but it really doesn't look damaged at all. And I mean, it moves smoothly and stuff. So there's really nothing wrong with it. It's just mangled. And the one that is off the unit that is I perceive to be in worse condition is in perfect shape. There's nothing wrong with it other than it doesn't slide, which I can easily take it apart and rebuild it. So I don't foresee that being a problem. It's just very, very interesting that the worse unit has the much better part 
and the better unit has the much worse part, and it just so happens that I have to switch those parts. So it's kind of like this this thing is a very, very awkward mixture of good and bad, but so far it's working in my favor. So I think the next thing we're going to do is take that manual shift uh, portion apart and see if we can get that sliding and make sure it works, and then uh, we'll move on from there. All right, so I just clipped it in the vise over there a little bit and uh, hammered on it from one end, and I got it to move. So uh, it doesn't move really smoothly yet all the way to the end of its stroke, but uh, it's starting to. So I think all I'm going to do is wire wheel it a little bit and uh, grease it up, get some PB blaster in there, and I bet it'll move back and forth no problem. So I'm just going to do that real quick, and then we'll start putting this thing back together. Listen, guys, the math is really, really simple. More subscribers equal more views. More views equals more popularity, and more popularity means I'll have a much better chance of convincing my wife to let me keep making these videos. So you know exactly what you need to do. You need to go hit that subscribe button right now. Okay, so we're all back together here. So we got two-wheel drive right there. Everything works well. And then... Uh, this thing pops out, it's still a little bit difficult to move. And then, once it comes out, we have four wheel. Now the only problem with this thing is it needs a front pinion bearing. And actually, I tried switching the front extension housings, but they don't swap, which is kind of interesting. When I put that one on this one, uh, it just seized up. So, it's fine for now. It's good enough to test it around the yard and stuff. And I'll just pull this extension housing off later, probably when I pull the body for body work and stuff. And uh, I'll switch both bearings and we'll be, we'll be good to go. So. There's that, and then we have the two high, four high up here, or four high, two low up here, and neutral in the middle. That obviously works perfect. So now all we have to do is get this spud shaft out of here and get it onto here. And I would guess that all I need to do is put the nut back on this and just tap it out the front, and then just tap it into that one, and uh, everything will be right in the world. So let's do that. And sure enough, it just popped right out of the other one. And popped right into this one. Now this thing is really working beautiful. Um, it rotates over really easily uh, and everything's awesome. All the bearings are good. So uh, this thing's actually a really cool design because the old the old design, the uh, output shaft on the trans would go all the way through this thing to the rear bearing. And this one's got like a center support bearing here, which is a sealed unit, which just sits in the case. So it's pretty cool. Um, it, it's definitely going to work well. It's a nice adapter. So this thing is all set. The only thing I have to do is put the covers back on, but the gasket kit hasn't showed up yet. So uh, we are all done with the transfer case. The next thing we have to do is pull this transmission off, and then we gotta throw a new flex plate, a torque converter in that with, I think, a little crank adapter. And then we can bolt it back on, and then we can bolt the, the transfer case back together, the covers, and then put it back on the trans, and then everything goes back in the Land Cruiser. And then we'll uh, start wiring it back up and stuff and getting ready to drive this thing. All right, so flash forward about a week. All my parts came in. I got brand new B&M torque converter, um, transmission pan gasket, and a filter from TCI, a new flex plate and ARP hardware for the torque converter from Advanced Adapters. This is a new water pump for the truck engine, and then a new belt tensioner. So I think I have everything to put this thing together. So I also painted a bunch of stuff. So I already took the pan off, drained it, painted it. Um, we're gonna have to take the pan off the engine because I have a new gasket for that. I also have the rear main seal and the rear cover gasket. So what we have to do right now is pull the transmission off uh, and then we will pull the flex plate off, pull the rear cover off. We'll do a new rear main seal, put the cover back on, put the advanced adapters flex plate on, put the torque converter on and the trans back on. We can put the trans pan back on and then we'll uh, put the transfer case back on. So let's get to work doing that, and then we can put it all back in the Land Cruiser.
All right, so took the pan off, cleaned it out. It had some pretty nasty sludge down in the bottom there. Um, but I'm just hoping that's kind of a buildup of condensation. And we're just going to say a silent prayer that we're not doing head gaskets on this thing very soon. But cleaned it up, got it back on there with a new gasket. Rear cover, as you saw, a uh, new gasket there, new rear main seal. And we got our new uh, flex plate on there from Advanced Adapters. And we have the crank snout adapter here uh, that goes onto the new torque converter. So next thing is we're gonna throw a cord ATF in the torque converter. We'll get it onto the TH350 and then we're gonna bolt this thing back on here. Uh, and then put the trans pan on and move forward from there. All right, guys, that's a wrap. Transmission is done. Transfer case is done. Engine is all done. Everything is painted and clean and nice. All new stainless hardware back here. I'm pretty happy with it. Now, I know my whole intent here was to get this thing back into the truck today, but uh, that's not gonna happen. I think this video is already probably too long. So uh, I'm gonna call it right here because I have a ton of cleanup work to do. So in the next video, we're gonna put it back in the truck we're gonna get it all installed, uh, and we'll start working on brakes, steering, pedals, uh, all the other stuff. Uh, we're kind of cutting it close here to get it yard driving before winter, which was my intent, but we're gonna get it done no matter what it takes. So don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time on Randwood Park.